Just acknowledging the truth of how God has created a woman unique. To receive and nurture life, whatever circumstance, situation she's in. To be able to reflect that in a woman who's in a crisis who it's so easy to forget that. Or just the crisis is so overwhelming and the fear that she's alone, that she can't do this, that everyone's walking away. For one woman to look at her and say, I see you. You are capable. There is more to you than this situation. There is more to you than the things that you regret you did. When she's able to see that capacity, wow, she's unstoppable, Father. Welcome to the Father Leo Show, where we are dishing out faith, culture, and commentary. And we've got an amazing show today where we're going to talk about what it means to be a professed religious sister, but also a warrior and an advocate for life. And we've got Sister Maria Agnus Dei. It's a lot of genitives in a Latin name. And uh, she grew up in Maine and graduated the Catholic University of America with a Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. And after working in the ICU, she entered the Sisters of Life in 2007, professed her final vows in 2015, and she currently serves as the local superior so we got a mother superior here of St. Francis de Chantal Convent in the Bronx, and she works as the formation director for postulants of the community. And we also have Sister Mary Grace. You're going to hear where she's from, Sydney, Australia, mate. And uh, she graduated from the University of Notre Dame in Australia with a degree in theology, which is shocking to me because... Australia and theology, we're going to get into all of that. But she also was a campus ministry team member before entering the Sisters of Life in 2013, made her final vows in 2018, and now she spent three years in Toronto in youth ministry. Again, shocking faith, Toronto, Catholicism, and now she's also in the Bronx. She coordinates the evangelization mission of the Sisters of Life, which she shares the good news of God's love for every human life, even people you might not like <laughs> sisters welcome to the show Thank Thank you, Father. i to am you. first of all i'm a little bit uh fan struck right now <laughs> we we had the same experience i was like we're going on the father no, you, show you were excited because you thought i was cooking for you yes. <laughs> do not lie we're hopeful. it's true but really i i yeah. have been a big fan ever mm -hmm. since i knew about a new religious order mm -hmm. and secondly after i saw mm -hmm a Twitter clip of one of the sisters rollerblading along the river. Yep, so it's real. Th this yeah. is you all here. This is us. Mm -hmm. This is you. Okay, so first of all, sisters, again, <laughs> thank you for coming. Tell me, what is the mission of the Sisters of Life? Because mm -hmm. you are relatively new. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, we were founded and, uh, okay, hold on, can I start over? No, <laughs> <laughs> not at all. We love this because she was oh the gosh. one most frightened about <laughs> editing. And yeah. we, we want to show the world Amen. that sisters don't always know exactly what to say, True but father. you do have eyes behind your head. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> so when were you a... founded? Let's put it that we way. We were founded yeah. in 1991, mm -hmm. so we are young. We're like 33 years old. Very young. And yep. Colonel Connor was our founder, and he was the Colonel Archbishop of New York, um, mm -hmm. and 70 years old, and yes, receives this inspiration to found a religious community dedicated to the protection and enhancement of the sacredness of human life, which is pretty darn cool, right? And, mm -hmm. But you're just in New York, or are you all over the country? Started here, but uh, we're now in Toronto is on our international convent, but we're slowly making our way through the country. So we're in Denver, and Phoenix is the furthest west we've gone. But, okay. But, yeah, born and raised in New York, and actually most of our missions kind of come from here, which is amazing because in New York you kind of like get the, the best and the worst. You okay. know, it's like yeah. the light. Well, we're going to talk about the best and the worst, <laughs> yeah. sisters. <laughs> but you, what is your official kind <clears throat> of mission? Yeah. We take mm -hmm. a special fourth vow to protect and enhance the sacredness of human life. So basically, we have the joy of um, gazing upon life from the heart of the Father, basically, mm -hmm. from the heart of the Trinity. That sounds so pious. I know. But listen, if we if we translate it, it's mm -hmm. like seeing the beauty of each and every human person, mm -hmm. seeing the dignity, seeing the the reality that God has shared His himself with each and every single human person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's pretty exciting. We get to contemplate the beauty of the human person um, and, yeah, rest in the heart of the Father. Very pious, but this is, like, the, at the heart of who we are. I don't mind pious. I mean, <laughs> look at you. It's I true. mean, you couldn't get any more pious. Kinda, we're kind of dressed pious. How yeah, do people yeah, react everywhere. when they see you? We kind of get everything, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, we get the sweet ones, like you get on a bus and sisters have been called by children, like, oh, look, Mom, it's a princess. And you're like, oh, a so princess. sweet. princess. I tell you, Father, like one time in Toronto, you get the other extreme where a little girl across the road waves to me, so I wave back, and she <laughs> pulls her mom's arm. She's like, look, Mom, a unicorn. <laughs> 
and honestly, like that's actually we can well, get any you reaction. Are a little bit of mm-hmm. unicorn there, it's, it's, it's it, but true. but I mean your habit itself, it kind of looks Dominican. <clears throat> yes. Yep. That's true. Actually, we you're right on. We and stole, then the blue is kind of like very Marian. You got yep. it. Yeah, we stole it from the National Dominicans because Mother Assumpta mm-hmm. um, actually helped uh, form our community for an entire year when we were initially founded. And the the medallion that you have, <clears throat> Madonna yep. Streets. Uh, Madonna, oh, Della Strada. You got it. Yeah, wow, that beautiful. is a pretty famous one. Very it is. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And it, do you have to have a certain height requirement? Because you guys are literally <laughs> twins, but just from. <laughs> I'm a little you know, older. Yeah, she's just separated. only slightly older. Yeah, okay, yeah. so the Sisters of Life, it says officially, are women in love with love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Love incarnate, crucified, mm-hmm. and risen, mm-hmm. captivated by the truth Ooh. and the beauty mm-hmm. of hu- every human person created in God's image and likeness. Yeah. Every person is valuable and sacred. So mm-hmm. in a way, you are pro-life advocates. Mm-hmm. So Amen. I want to hear what do you do practically mm-hmm. day yeah. to day? What are you doing? Yeah. 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 Yeah, and you named it, Father. Like, those truths are like, they're true for every human person, but we know that it's like, it's so difficult to believe in these basic truths that we know by faith, but then it's like, oh my gosh, you walk out in the street and it's like, well, I don't feel very good, or I have this expectation to try and live a certain way. I don't believe I'm in the image and likeness of God every morning. So it's like, it's a battle that every human heart is experiencing every day. Mm -hmm. Um, But what is beautiful is that we see in our missions, in a particular way to women in crisis pregnancies, when literally their world is turned upside down. Yeah. When they whether by through a sister or circumstances, open their hearts to this truth again, that their life is good, that God does have a plan, that this darkness is not the only thing that defines them, that there is more. They receive the capacity to respond with courage. I mean, you can say that because you have an accent. <laughs> and it people does will help. listen to it's you. It's true, Father. It's, it's true. true, right? Say it in the I American mean, like, accent. <laughs> she's going to have to get back her main accent. Uh-oh. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Oh, God. Like, yeah, I'm so, having, yeah. So you are both sisters what, I, I just kind of want to ask you, what was the inspiration to get Whoa. into your vocation? Mm. <sighs> I mean, is this, this going to have to be part one of eight? Yeah, absolutely. It's like that song, like, one way or another, mm. God's, he's going to find you. He's mm. going to get you, get you, get you. Yeah. Wow, that, that, that was very fun. hip of you. Yeah. <laughs> just, wow. No, actually, I think it's voca- every vocation story. Yeah. One yep. way or another, he's going to get you. And so how he's did he get you? In. Mm. So I know for mm-hmm. me, again, I grew up in rural Maine. There's no nuns there. Um, yes, I was one. Are of, there people? There are some. Okay. Some um, more moose than people. <laughs> and custard. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, I've never had custard. Maine custard. That's famous, though. Oh, yeah. no. is it? Uh oh, it's been a while. We got to catch you up. It hasn't anyway. got to our neighborhood yet. But um, this is great. You know more than I do. Um, but basically, yes, one of eight kids. I'm actually, I am a twin. Um, although I probably it's look, not me. I look more like Sister Mary Grace than I do my actual twin sisters. Wow. She's fraternal. Mm. Um, and actually, I have an older sister who's also mm. a sister of life, which is crazy. Cool. A lot of sisterhood going on. Okay, a lot of... She's not the only yeah, one. A lot of mind-blowing here. So yep. you've got a, a, a <laughs> sister, an older sister who is a sister of life. Uh-huh. And, yep. and, and, and you all, you joined the vocation because you... What, what, like, give me a reason mm. One why you One would answer is love. I mean, mm. honestly, nothing but love. The most powerful experience of love. Now you're actually, I'll be very honest, there's going to be people watching this who are going to say, what the faith does that mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> because they question. want it in their life. Yes. I mean, did yes. you feel, Yes. who, who was that introduced mm-hmm. you? You ready? And, yeah. You ready? Do you want to know about the moment? Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah, tell him. So. And don't lie. I'm not gonna. I'm, I'm gonna. Like, I'm gonna give it to you straight, Father. So basically, yes, I was like went to Catholic University of America, and actually, to be honest, I grew up in rural Maine, and I didn't have a culture of faith. I didn't mm-hmm. have like everything kind of on a silver platter for me in okay. my faith. And my father converted much later in the marriage. Um, saw my older siblings make different choices. You know, um, stay in the faith, leave the faith. And so when I went to Catholic, I was like, okay, Lord, show me your real. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to I wanna know you. Cool. Um, got to know John Paul II. I, I learned that I was a gift. I'm like, no one's ever told me that before. Mm-hmm. Like, my life's a gift. My love is a gift. Now what do I do with it? Um, Eucharistic adoration, who knew that was a thing? Um, mm-hmm. But that was a pretty awesome thing to discover. And there are people watching because I don't even know what that thing is. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're, so we're going to talk about there, that. We're, mm-hmm. Let's break it open. You know, Jesus, love himself. Um, so you were just introduced to Catholic things. That's it. Yep. Met other young people asking the same questions. Who am I? You know, what am I supposed to do with my life? Because, again. But were you religious or, or was it kind of nominal? <sighs> I would say I was um, I was on the fence. I mean, I was 
I was in the boat, but I didn't know how to paddle. But you go there to Catholic University so of America. This is like the first thing I remember doing because I knew mm -hmm. God was asking me to. Like I had I, I had the world at my feet. Um, yeah. I wanted to rock Division One athletics. Got injured. Okay, she just drops Division One athletics. <laughs> <laughs> What did you play? Um, yeah. I was a runner and I loved basketball. I played basketball too. Okay, so. you said that to me in a very tall way. <laughs> I mean, you said it. It's like, because, yeah, okay, so anyway. Yeah, I, go, I, I get taller when I talk about That's basketball. That's amazing. It yeah. really is amazing. And so yeah. all of these things, you just get introduced to Catholicism. Yep. And did you say, I want to be a sister of life? No. It no. took some time. It takes mm -hmm. time. And again, it's like falling in love with, with any anything or anyone, right? It takes time and it's a process and your heart's got to open and you got to grow in trust and, and you got to learn to be vulnerable. you signed up, were you, were you like all gung-ho mm -hmm. or were you scared or are you? So like, I call it a grace bomb. When God dropped the grace bomb. Grace which, bomb as opposed to the You know, I might come in other ways. Which is the faith bomb. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, yeah, maybe it was the, that too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But it was, I mean, it was like, I actually, everything paled. Mm -hmm. um, it was such a profound grace that it was like, yes, I'm 23 years old and, I, and I'm rocking intensive care as a nurse and I'm living with all my friends mm -hmm. and I'm having such a good time and the world's at my feet. But like when God pulled back the veil of my heart and I heard him calling, it was like everything else paled. Wow. And it was like, boom, I entered like five months, six months after that. Okay. 15 right. years ago. 15 years better ago. every day it, that's really quite lovely yeah. and so all of a sudden you are now in the you are now kind of there before sister mary grace enters yes. right Definitely. and so you have this aussie coming <laughs> in and she's like i'm from the land down under <laughs> <laughs> oh, no dancing here, sister. Oh, sorry, this sister. is a Catholic show. You, you can't right? tempt me with that Only one line from that song. It's inappropriate here. not to finish that. <laughs> <laughs> so tell yeah. me about your vocational story because, sure. again, I mean, I love yeah. the people of Australia. Yeah. I go there doing work and mission. Awesome. But I feel like they are about 40 years behind mm -hmm. evangelization. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're singing religious songs from 40 years ago was kind of really? modern yep. and contemporary. Uh-huh. Big town, small town, faithful. What was your probably experience? biggest town? Sydney. So I grew up in the city of Sydney. Uh, right. Family lived. We moved to the beach about when I was a teenager. So that was that was my world. It was kind of very much beach culture, which is everybody's close to the beach. So it's it's kind of like our way. Um, you know, I met the sisters when I was first year out of college. Again, similar to Maine, I had no exposure to religious life. So this wasn't even like my last thought, my first thought. It didn't even touch the horizon that this could even be a possible way to live. Um, or that I'd ever be attracted to it, you know? It was just, you know, sisters were just what you saw in the movies, which was... And they're real. In the movies, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But, um, you know, there was a particular moment for me, they came to my college campus and I saw the oh. sisters. I didn't even engage them farther. I couldn't go near them. I thought, this is just weird. Are they just wearing this when they're in Australia? I didn't, there was no connection, but I noticed there was a joy to them and a relatability that I hadn't seen before in my faith. And not only that, these were women in love with God. And for the first time in my life, I was like, I want that. Yeah, see, this is the problem that I think a lot of people have. You're talking about <laughs> loving someone that That's a lot it. of people in the modern world yes. say is an, an invisible man in the sky. Mm -hmm. And Father, without that, this life is impossible. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. um, and not only for us as sisters, like this dreamy possibility is just if you become a nun and enter a convent. No, this is the story of every human soul. God is in love with us. And he's calling us to life now, just not after. But if there was a sister who showed up and she was wearing a pantsuit and a blazer and a pin, would you feel, I mean, and I'm, I'm not being in any way mm -hmm. judgmental of anyone, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but we know that there was a movement for sisters to sure. kind of be more integrated in the human culture, secular culture, and totally mm -hmm. respectful. Mm -hmm. Would you think you would have felt the same way? Listen, I know the it Holy the Spirit habit. can move in any way, but I know he moved through that witness in my heart, for the sure. The habit. The habit and the mm, joy? Definitely. It was It was convicting. It was convicting that women, like here I am 18 and I'm setting up my life. I'm thinking of all my dreams, all my hopes. I'm trying to build something that's happy. Did and then I see women that walk around. Oh, I was bawling a mess. You I was saw a the mess sisters father. and you start crying? But it wasn't them. It was like I encountered Christ in them. I was like, this is the heart that I've been made for. Wow. Yeah. I didn't. Now, I did not get on a plane immediately because it, to me, like that was the encounter of Christ. I needed to go deeper at that so point. So you said you stayed away from them. Oh, didn't go near them. Except but you'd be like crying in a corner, be like, they're so beautiful. Actually, brother, I got really scared. I scared her. Yeah, it she, was my fault. Sister, so, <laughs> Sister Marie Agnus Dei. Yes. Quitolis peccata mundi. That's awesome. So you scared 
this little young lady I here. did, yeah, I did. Um, it was a bus trip <laughs> with all the nuns. Like, there was, like, mm -hmm. 50 nuns, because we yeah. all went to uh, World Youth Day in Sydney. Sydney. Yeah. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Best World Youth Day ever. Mm -hmm. um, and Sister, again, had the courage to get on the bus. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it really wasn't our That's fault. True. And then they sat her next to, I was a, I think I was a novice. I think you were. I, was, I had actually just received the habit. So I didn't, I was a little, you know, you as a novice. It off. You know, like, that's look it. Look at my habit. <laughs> yes. You don't really know what you, you're sporting your habit. What you're doing. You're like learning your moves. Um, <laughs> yeah. You're like, what is learning it? Learning your moves. <laughs> Sister's got moves. <laughs> yeah. You know, that, yeah. Oh my gosh. But mm -hmm. she came down with a whole bunch of novices. So we were all young sisters, and I thought mm -hmm. it was a great idea to have laugh therapy because it had been a long ride. And laugh therapy is when you basically mm -hmm. laugh in a way that you don't typically laugh, and um, it makes everyone else laugh. It's and then amazing. It works every time. Laughing like crazy. It's, was, it gets crazy. Okay, I have to ask. <laughs> <laughs> you can't just play. Hold on, the like. <laughs> I, I, I don't think you can. You just do anything but your own laugh. Anything like and it could so, be high laughing. And laughing. so, what did you do? Yeah, well, do you remember Father, I don't. I don't know, Sister. Do you remember? Yeah, it went. It went something like this. <laughs> huh, 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 huh. And, and and that's what scared you. <laughs> what well, was like? You can think about. It. I mean, because it, to be honest with you. That sounds creepy. Yeah, that, that, see, that was a creepy, creepy laugh. It was intended to be creepy. Yeah. But then it catches, and then someone goes high, and then someone throws a little... Like, and then and then your laugh comes, and you just can't stop. It's okay, awesome. So, so you went on this World Youth Day thing. Yeah. You see the sisters. She's doing creepy laugh. Yeah. And you, yeah. And you start crying again. Because yes. Because like, get me off this bus. <laughs> and so you yeah. join, and now I got to ask, because a lot of people want to know. Mm -hmm. Is it comfortable? Oh, mm. the habit? Yeah. Surprisingly so. I love it. Yeah. Oh, I love it. It's It reminds mm -hmm. me of who I am, and it helps everyone else to, to know How who I am. How does it stay so clean? Good question. Don't that look too close. Yeah. A... We scrub well. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. <laughs> New York City throws some yeah. some pretty tough curveballs at tough. it. It's tough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then they're also going to ask, because I kind of want to know, too. I mean, mm -hmm. and I kind of know, because I know religious <laughs> brothers, but brothers are very different from sisters. Mm-hmm. In many, many ways. Sure, I know that the sure, world sure. doesn't want to admit that, yep. but they are. What time do you wake up? And I kind of want to hear what your day looks like. Yeah, this is one of the hardest parts for me. Are you ready? still on Australian time zone? Is <laughs> exactly. That, is that Listen, it takes time. Yeah, when you're on the completely different 5 a.m. on a typical day for us. So is 5 a.m., is it a bell ring? Yep. It's a bell. It's a gentle okay. bell. And good thing we all do it together. Otherwise, gentle I wouldn't. Gentle bell. Yeah. Sometimes it's not <laughs> better so than lump. Yeah. yeah it's okay, true. you wake up at 5 <laughs> a.m. and the first thing you do is you just yeah. kind of like do a song of praise. I mean, honestly, I, I, I think yeah. people don't yeah. know. So tell us. Yeah. yeah. I mean, listen, Santa Zimmer used to call it the heroic minute, and I'm waiting for that heroism to pass, but it doesn't heroic matter. Heroic minute. It's, it, it's a heroic, it's a heroic first minute of every day, and I don't think it's gotten easier. Some days I think it gets harder. And, and, you, and, and what does that heroic minute look like? When the bell rings and you have to say, yes, Lord. Amen. <laughs> roll out of bed. I even developed like a roll out move just to help throw Again, my... Again, you're into the moves. <laughs> Your sister is She's into the moves. The moves. It's, true, it's true. It's true. It's true. I think there's an interior part of me that wants to be a ninja, which you can still fulfill as a sister. And did you say that because, you know, I'm Filipino it's and Asian sister. and yeah, uh, yeah. You're and, kidding. And a ninja? Well, you're fine. I'm not a ninja. Yeah. I'm not a ninja. <laughs> I How play exciting. one on TV. No, so, <laughs> all right, so the heroic minute, you do this back flip into mm -hmm. a kneeling position. Morning offering. Morning offering. Bam. Mm -hmm. Give your day to God. And mm -hmm. then your personal care. That's do you it. have a certain amount of time for 30 that? 30 minutes. We do. 30 minutes and we meet in chapel. Okay. Did it's you hear possible. that? Ladies, it, yeah, it's possible. every <laughs> man is nudging their wife. <laughs> It is possible. Thirty minutes. Yeah, I mean, kudos to women. We do have the same out outfit every day, so it does. It's a little bit. It's it's easier for us. You well, gotta, you know you gotta go gently. Women can also plan their mm. outfits the night before. They true. They right? can. It's they true. can. As God plans yours, and then you take the thirty minutes. You put on, and it looks like there's more to it with your outfit. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it it happens fast. Mm -hmm. And then you kind of shuffle quietly to the chapel. Yes, That's we right. stay in silence. See, now this yep. is important. Yep, so we're again, living in silence the first half of the day. Men are now nudging their wives again. Yep. Yep. It is possible to be quiet in the morning. Yes. It's true. Yes. Important, and actually, to be charitable. Where is the coffee? Yeah, the, um, little delay on that one. No coffee. The coffee is Jesus. Yep. Okay, so That's, 30 minutes it's prep, true. few minutes to get to the chapel. You're in, after rise, mm -hmm. after that first bell rings, you're in chapel, and you're saying your prayers 30 minutes later. Mm -hmm. So it's like, then you're praying, officer readings, morning prayer, a 30-minute meditation, 
and mass. So are you doing that alone or do you make her do it because of the accent? <laughs> We definitely do all things together. Everything yeah. together. Yeah. There's yeah. rarely a moment we, yeah. we do as Sisters of Life. We have a strong life of community. Yeah. And and that's important. If we want to build a culture of life, we've got to live it first ourselves. Okay. So mm -hmm. only after about, I don't know, how many hours is that? I, I, it's yeah. like an hour and a half. An hour and a half. Too. An hour and a half of prayer. Mm -hmm. you, then you go down and have breakfast, and then you have your coffee. Who makes the breakfast? So we share it. Yeah. So you're assigned mm -hmm. different days to cook. Yeah. And then you have one sister who coordinates all the meals. Um, and then you do, it's like a family style. So let's admit, are there some times when you think, good Lord, <laughs> sister's making the breakfast. <laughs> good thing it's steady I'm every fasting morning, Father. today. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get this same breakfast every morning, except yeah. Sundays. Mm -hmm. Okay, now what does that breakfast consist of? It's simple. It get, uh, what, basic cereal, no big deal. Toast, Can you eggs, talk then, or is that still quiet? Silent, and we have mm -hmm. table readings, so we're listening to, like, the Father Leo show, or we're listening yeah. to... Yeah. Right, right, right. <laughs> she lies to a priest <laughs> on the show. No. <laughs> anyway, but it yeah. is true, good podcasts, or mm -hmm. um, just to feed our, feed our bodies, but then feed our souls, mm -hmm. our okay. hearts for the day. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, let me ask you... Mm -hmm. Are, are the women awake or are they, I mean, because we're human here mm -hmm. and a lot of people mm -hmm. forget that you're human yeah, because absolutely. they see you and they think you're like little angels mm -hmm. gliding along the way. And mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. there are personalities. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's where I've seen Father Eel also too, like the power of starting the Word of God, literally. Like I'm learning more and more each time. Like I need the Word of God, the truth, to actually orient my whole day. Like what am I starting my day with? It actually affects the rest of the day so much. So even that as sisters is like we go straight to the Lord to like literally set the trajectory for our day. So you, you, you are doing nothing different but just because people turn on the radio and they listen right. to secular music. Yep. You're just simply orienting yes. yourself and that's yep. a word. And not yep. because I'm Oriental, but yep. it's to the east. Yeah. Amen. You're looking to the light. Yeah, so. and it, it literally affects the rest of the day, what we start with, for sure. Okay. And Father, it's possible. I just spent 10 days with 25 college students around the country, spring break, New York City. They lived our life for a week. God bless them. They were so brave, but they're not sisters. So they weren't living in the grace that we're relying on. After a week of living our life, as hard as it was to live the silence, every college student ended that week said, I want to spend the first hour of my day in silence. And I want to turn to God because I really don't need to touch my phone in that first hour. Now, I could have told them the beginning of the week and they did not believe me. They're like, sister, way too high goal. They experienced it for a week and they're like, I want this. I want the silence in my life. I want that rest. And I mm. want that true word to be my first thought. Okay, but guess what? Every nun prays. Yes. <laughs> what's what's the yeah. difference in how your Lex or you know, Aranda affects yeah. your Lex Credendi. I'm throwing out Latin here. This is impressive. You know, because <laughs> yeah. of Sister Maria Agnus Dei. Uh, <laughs> Who never and by the way, Latin do class. you choose your names or, is they, or are they Good given? Question. We do. So you chose all those Latin genitives. Well, here's the thing. I'm just of. I'm just of. I know this is going to sound of, pious. Of, of, yeah. I'm of, of, of. And that's it. Like, of, of the Father's love, of Our Lady's love, okay. of Our Lord's and love. And Sister Mary Grace, because she just wasn't original. I mean, it's like, <laughs> let's pick the most holy woman name <laughs> and Grace. It's true. That's the thing. I'll <laughs> take all the grace and help from other Mary I can. It That's is. It. And so I'm you defined have been by Marie that. Grace. Yeah. Grazie. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. okay. So, but I, I mean, I'm, listen, again, as a, as someone who has been a, a great fan of you yes. all in your work, hmm. I love the fact that I can joke with you like my sisters. Oh, definitely. I mean, yeah. you, it's well, real, Father. Because yeah. some people think that sisters don't have personalities. Yeah. We have a lot of personality. Definitely. Remember that? Yeah. You, you've heard it, like the yeah. mean mm -hmm. rulers with the nuns. No. When you mm -hmm. think of that, what when you hear that, mm -hmm. what do you think? No, we kill them with kindness. Yeah. Yeah. We kill them with kindness. Yeah. No more rulers. And yeah. her dance moves. But, <laughs> yeah. And Father, if, no, if the yeah. Lord calls us to this vocation, then I know that like he doesn't ask me to leave my womanhood at the door. Yeah. It's like my whole person enters and and it, and the vocation God calls us to, wherever we are, mm -hmm. we become authentically more and more authentically ourselves. And that yeah. should happen everywhere. Marriage, whether we're single, whatever it is, if we're following the Lord, we become who we are yeah. in relationship with him. And yeah. that's what we experience in the convent. It does not stop at the door. Yeah. I become more myself, please God. God. And you then continue your work because again, everyone yeah. in religious prays. Yes. Yours is a unique focus. Yes. And then your day starts. What time is this? Well, usually breakfast ends around like eight thirty, mm -hmm. and then yes, you you roll into the okay. apostolate. J just so you know, I'm, I've got a crew here. I ask them what time <laughs> they wake up. They wake up at eight o'clock. Yeah. Wow. That's real. Now they feel terrible. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Yes, okay, they should. I did that pre-convent. <laughs> 8 o'clock was early. Absolutely. So 8.30, you yep. get up and you're like, okay, 
And now I drive. Do mm-hmm. I rollerblade? Do I walk? Mm-hmm. Do I take the bus? So this is the beauty of religious life. It's like there's a time for everything, right? So, Amen. yes, you have um, apostolic hours. So if you're serving uh, at our maternity, our, our comment that we welcome women to live with us while they're pregnant, then, again, what you're saying is you're living with the mm-hmm. women that you're serving. So you never know when they need someone to help hold the baby or well, take them to an appointment. Well, now, you just said something that a lot of people have no idea what mm-hmm. you do. So on a practical level, yes. I know that you're yep. in love with love. Yep. But what are the practical Absolutely. things How does it that translate? you do? Mm-hmm. So we welcome women who are pregnant to live with us. Um, and we mother the mothers so that they in turn just mother any their woman? children. Just any woman? You know, it's women who God really handpicks, and they know it, and we know it, Mm -hmm. um, and they find their way to us, which is a miracle in itself, and that women, too, who can live community, because, like, what you're saying is, like, yes, you've got a lot of personalities, and women Mm -hmm. who can enter into that and appreciate uh, that gift, right? If if they, if, it's always a discernment. We want to uniquely support a woman in the way that she can receive that support. Okay, so, again, I love this (laughs) incredible... self-giving of trust to God's will, mm-hmm. but some people would be like, I don't buy it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because yep. could a husband say, hey, my wife is pregnant. She is unbearable. I'm dropping her off at the convent for <laughs> until she gives birth to this baby. You know, um, I mean, we haven't seen that one yet, um, <laughs> but women who, yes, mm-hmm. are pregnant, vulnerable, um, often feel like they don't have what they need to say yes, mm-hmm. to practically realize this pregnancy. Yeah. And for us to say, we're with you, we're for you. Generally, okay, then let's welcome. get practical here. These mm-hmm. are generally women who are probably living in disadvantaged communities. Well, mm-hmm. you would be surprised. Young Both professionals, okay. college students. Now we're getting it um, here. I mean, pretty much everything. Yeah. And everything. they made this choice because at one point, maybe they thought that they we're going to choose an abortion. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And so mm-hmm. you not only house women in their pregnancy, is it like mm-hmm. from start to finish? Absolutely. And then even up to a year after that child um, is, has been born. How many are there? You know, uh, mm-hmm. at Sacred Heart Convent, um, about eight women can live there at a time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so it's, it's beautiful. Uh, How do mm-hmm. they pay for this? You know, mm-hmm. God's providence. Mm-hmm. There it is again. Bam. There it is again. God like loves God's life. providence. He's sick in love with life. And so you probably <laughs> yeah. have some people who support and donate. Definitely. Yep. And so we're going to make sure that people know how awesome. to do that because I know mm-hmm. that you 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 said prior to the show that you're mm-hmm. bad at self promotion. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> we let the Holy Spirit you should read do. my yeah. book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because if you have yeah. a product, you need to be proud of it. Yeah. And, sure. and this is something that the Catholic Church can certainly be proud of. And want to support Mm -hmm. okay so we'll talk about that later so you've Mm -hmm. got a house of eight women Mm -hmm. i mean but you've got a bunch of sisters do they all just take care of each woman or Mm -hmm. is there another thing that you all do it's the religious family i mean it's all community so we have probably eight to ten sisters living in that convent and they're forming a life of community and they're we're welcoming the women into that Mm -hmm. um which is a beautiful family even after they give birth oh yeah Mm -hmm. you are working with them for up to a year oh yeah oh yeah and some some of our mothers have come back now with oh my gosh what was that one college student came recently like he's in college and brought his whole football team uh, to come visit the place that he grew up in you know these these kids are now in their college years and they still know that no matter what they go through in their life that this place is forever their home oh my gosh not just for that crazy yeah crazy and that's well, and even too, we go to the hospital with them, and a lot of times um, we're with a woman, and they're like, "Who's who's this? Who's she?" And they're like, yeah. "What do you mean?" My partner. <laughs> oh, yeah. My sister. My yeah. sister. Even though I can be whiter than white, and she can be blacker than black, and we are, yep. we're we're in it yep. together, and yep. we do. We have a principle of non-abandonment, so we're with these women, and yep. a lot of times we're the ones that have the privilege and mm-hmm. joy of holding their hand um, during that labor and holding that little one. Um, so that's one house. Yep. yep. Right. How many houses do you have like mm-hmm. this? Um, mm-hmm. Currently, that's the only one. Okay. But we have mm-hmm. um, what we call our visitation mission, yep. which allows us to serve thousands of women yep. who are... Do tell. Yeah, absolutely. Do which think? don't necessarily need an immediate accommodation or a place of refuge. They just need to be reminded of their goodness mm-hmm. and to have... Uh, yeah, a place where they can come and trust and just be real with their situation and the sisters can come in and love them and help them through resources and different uh, helps help them to see that they're, they're, that this life is possible and the gift of their own life mm-hmm. is possible. Yeah. Because when we realize that about ourselves, it's like we're actually 
we're actually capable of so much more than we realize. Um, so as sisters, practically speaking, we also have like what we call a co-worker outreach mission, uh, where they're like uh, people from all walks of life, backgrounds, professions, ages, and they're really like our hands and feet in the world. And they help us create a community wherever the woman is and whatever need she is. And that's where we see God's providence exceptionally. And so um, yeah. on a practical level here, yeah. you have the house, but then you also have a group of sisters yep. going yes, out absolutely. to them. How do they find you? Oof, Again, depression. God's miracles. It can be Again, online. You know, like this whole providence thing seriously, is killing seriously. me. That's one what, woman, okay, get is. this. One yeah. woman, she gave, she called a taxi, gave the taxi to an address, oh. which she thought was the abortion clinic. But somehow the address actually, because she was also in conversation with us. Anyway, she showed up at our doorstop. Um, God's miracles. And we saw her and she's like, oh my gosh, like mm -hmm. God is acting. We had one woman come to us because somehow she found one of our brochures in a Planned Parenthood. We don't know how our one of our brochures got into a Planned Parenthood facility. Because we know you don't self-promote. We, we don't self-promote, <laughs> Father, you nailed it. And like, but here she <clears throat> knew as she picked it up, um, she, she had said a prayer that morning, God, if you don't want me to do this, mm -hmm. give me a sign. So, so I just want to remind everybody that you, as you rely on providence, it also requires people to be willing to even just say a simple prayer like, Set. God help me with this pregnancy. Amen. He'll never miss an opportunity. Yep. And he loves pregnant women. He loves life. Yeah. You know, that's, <laughs> I love pregnant women. <laughs> that's just, yeah. it, it sounds so strange, yeah. but people mm -hmm. are very hostile to life right now too. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about some of the, have you ever felt hostility or are people just always nice to nuns? Mm. You know, absolutely. Actually, mm -hmm. a, recent uh, a recent situation one of our sisters was in, which I thought was just so beautiful, actually. We were um, handing out brochures outside of an abortion clinic. And one woman said to this sister, like, I hate everything to do with the Catholic Church. Mm. Hello. Yeah. Yeah, right? Awesome. So we got some Bronx Eesh. spice. But this sister, what did she say in response? She said, gosh, I'm sorry. Tell me more about that. This woman starts pouring out her heart. She had had 17 abortions. Mm -hmm. She didn't know Seven healing was possible. Abortions. Didn't know healing mm -hmm. was possible. You wouldn't, you wouldn't believe that's many women's stories. Mm -hmm. And she didn't know healing was possible. She didn't know that there was warmth and love in the heart of the church. Mm -hmm. And basically, um, this sister was able to share that because we also walk with women who come to us seeking healing yes. after abortion, uh, which I know for me, it's like I fall in love with God again and again and again. These mm -hmm. are women so courageous in receiving his gift of mercy mm -hmm. there is nothing that his gift of mercy cannot heal um and so this woman now yes is connected and and we have the privilege of walking with her and mm -hmm. just being her sister as she mm -hmm. uh claims the grace of god it's pretty unbelievable mm -hmm. it's crazy but it kind of takes mm -hmm. you know i was i was reading this thing about uh this this island that is so remote and disconnected they mm -hmm. are protected and there was a doctor who was circling around trying to make connection with them for yeah. years you know bring them food and and, and supplies mm -hmm. they would threaten them hmm. but uh, one year a woman came wow. and she was the first to make contact with mm -hmm. them wow. I, I think that women mm -hmm. have a very unique ability mm -hmm. to kind of touch hearts in a way that a man can't. Mm -hmm. Has that been your experience, sister, that mm -hmm. um, that you're doing work that, you know, women do this better? I mean, obviously you want men mm -hmm. to be part of it all, mm -hmm. but the sisters for life, is there a brothers for life? Not mm -hmm. yet. <laughs> Not that we know of, but mm -hmm. listen, it would be a great cause. Yeah, I mean, we can expect from personal experience, but I would say that, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, there's a there's a there's a feminine genius in every woman's heart. Okay, I, I think it's hold real. on one second here. <laughs> We're I mean, talking that. now St. John Paul, yeah. the second theology, the body. Yes. He's our grandfather. Yeah, we and claim so it, but it's, we've, we've seen it. This oh feminine my genius, do yeah. explain, because now women are elbowing their husbands. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> listen up, listen up. Flat well, up. it's just acknowledging the truth of how God has created a woman unique. Mm -hmm. uh, that yes, it's distinct from a male, but it's it's beautiful. And uh, you can tell us about the masculine genus right after. But women do have a capacity to receive life in an incredible way. Mm -hmm. Yes, physically, but also too, the, I think we underestimate the capacity of a woman's heart to receive and nurture life, whatever circumstance situation she's in. And we see this um, exponentially as sisters of life, just as women that, uh, that love life uh, and experience in our own hearts, when you love and receive a person and see the good in them and remind them of that good, how much life can come from that place. 
um, and also in our own hearts as, as women, but to be able to reflect that in a woman who's in a crisis who it's so easy to forget that or just the crisis is so overwhelming and the fear that she's alone, that she mm. can't do this, that everyone's walking away, for one woman to look at her and say, I see you, you are capable, there is more to you than this situation, there is more to you than the things that you regret you did, when she's able to see that capacity, wow, she's unstoppable, Father, when you she know, knows she's loved. Mm -hmm. How God made women is is with the capacity and the potential to do things that only God can do. Uh -huh. Bring life into this Amen. world yeah. and turn their bodies into food. Wow. It's pretty mm -hmm. awesome. You're welcome. It's extraordinary. It's pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. You're I just, you can I use that about it like that. Exactly. Wow. Yeah. It's in my book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so great, so you go and do this apostolic work, whether yeah. it be yeah. taking care yeah. of women in the house or going out mm -hmm. to women mm -hmm. and yeah. families yep. and just being a presence and supporting yes. them. Yeah. Is there anything else that you're doing? Yeah. I mean, you also have a podcast. Yes. Yeah. We have a lot of it's true. the privilege of uh, bringing love to uh, others via evangelization and retreats. Mm -hmm. So we also have a retreat center in Connecticut. A yep. retreat center. Okay. And that is awesome to be able to welcome people in because yep. it is, this, this is a, these are tough times. Well, retreats mm -hmm. are incredibly important for the Christian, for, excuse me, the spiritual life. I mean, Absolutely. Muslims yeah. and Jews and even atheists have retreats, yeah. mm -hmm. you know. But uh, one of the things that I loved about retreats was that the food was always so good. The sisters make it the helps. food, actually. You have to up. have it. Yep. And it's delicious. It's good, Father. The All right. cookies really... Yep. Sign me up. And they almost, yep. like, dry you yeah, to confession. So you have an apostle... <laughs> <laughs> Just bring it in. Wait because it Grace makes you sin, me. is that right? Well, that too, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you've got the retreat. Yeah. Are you in schools? Or are you just kind of a presence? We were in schools yesterday. That's true. It's yeah, yeah. So you don't have to, you yeah. don't have to work it. No. We don't directly, but we, Father, we get hounded with requests from all over the country where mm -hmm. there is an aching cry uh, for this truth to be spoken everywhere that I'm good, that my life is a gift, that God actually has a plan for me, even mm. if I'm not aware of it all the time, uh, that God is merciful. So we basically have a whole mission where we're constantly sending sisters to places that are asking for a word of truth, that are reminding me of the sacredness of my life, mm -hmm. which is a foreign language today. And so, you, uh, you also are just a presence. I yes. mean, I see you at the March for Life. You're yep. kind of very yep. easy to find. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the way, here's here's what I want to do. I want to bring my food truck to the March for Life. Let's but do I it, have Father. That's a great idea. It. All, all in. Right, so, I'm all in. Yeah, I'm yep. gonna put you on the. Yep. You're gonna be on the stir fry. On and the you're grill. gonna be on yep. the griddle. That's awesome. Okay, so uh, and, and just kind of feeding people, being a presence. You all yes. literally have worn me out with as much work as you've I'm done. So, well, <laughs> what time does your day end? Yeah. I mean, so you, you, yeah. you your apostolic times are from what time to what time? Um, <laughs> well, and here's the thing: it's a big weave, so it's kind of hard to tell, or it's mm -hmm. hard to kind of break it down. But I think we pray about. Four and a half, five mm -hmm. hours a day. Mm -hmm. And I would say, apostolically, we're probably in mission mm -hmm. six hours a day. Wait a minute. People have just that. dropped their jaws. Lucky if These you get six, actually. These sisters pray See. four mm -hmm. to five hours a day. Father, we're this, is the, active. this is the secret of our work and this our is mission, is that it is it is actually on the Lord Jesus and his desire for these women. And, and, and literally, it's like the more that we actually open our hearts and receive, that we stay in this relationship with Jesus Christ throughout our day, that wherever we go, whether we're washing dishes at home or we're on the front line giving a talk or we're before a woman one-on-one, -on -one, that his power and his yeah. life is what is changing hearts. 100%. And we are just these humble little vessels that open our hearts, work. But which is possible. But four to five hours That's a the thing. Day. It doesn't make it's sense. Secret. And because it's what not... What do you say? Okay, now, Amen. granted, I'm kind Ooh. of... I know this. Yeah. I don't do mm -hmm. active four to five hours of prayer a day. We, yes. We're committed to making visits to the Blessed yes. Sacrament mm -hmm. and meditating throughout the yeah. day and all that stuff. But, I mean, this four to five hours are used like saying, I got to pause and I got to pray for an hour. I mean... Well, yes. We have two periods of meditation. So okay. it is, yes. and actually, that's where we come to to grow into God's vision of human life. How are we gonna serve the beauty, the sacredness of human mm -hmm. life if we don't see it like God sees it, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where two periods of meditation, yeah. rosary, divine office, um, but it is, it's absolutely our secret to mm -hmm. everything, right? Mm -hmm. Like you see God, actually we were joking one time, we were collaborating with another group and we were like cr cranking out the work mm -hmm. and they're like, how are you guys doing this? But actually God does it and mm -hmm. he makes incredible, I'm telling you, it makes good Listen, use I mean, of like all the time all the we give sisters him. that I know that take prayer seriously mm -hmm. yeah. are doing amazing. I mean, look at Mother mm -hmm. Teresa. How did that woman do all of that right. stuff? Well, she prayed. Right. And she actually told sisters, yes. stop serving right now. you got to pray Amen. She before told you can do that. Father Bennett, Chris Shelley, he's like, we're too busy. There's too, mm -hmm. too, 
too many poor to serve. Mm -hmm. She's like, then you have to pray not just one holy hour, but two. Yeah. It's like she had that vision too. So that to okay, now that you've made me feel absolutely guilty, <laughs> thank you very much. It takes a sister to make yes. me feel guilty. <laughs> Sorry, brother. <laughs> no, and listen, I got to learn from the sisters and the yeah. mothers. Your day ends at what time? Mm. Compline usually, last prayer of the day is around 8.15. Yep. 8.15. Yep. And do you get the little holy water blessing as you make your way out of the uh, chapel or something? You, you could. You we, could dabble in sure, it. Sure, yeah. We, we sing a song to Our Lady. Yeah. We give the whole day to Our Lady. So and you're in bed by what time? Lights out at 10. 10? The yeah. latest story. No, I'd, I'd be out by like 8.30. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The rate you all are going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then it, the day just starts over and over again. Mm -hmm. Now people are going to ask then too. What do you do for fun? Mm, good question. Besides come so on my much. podcast we and our fun. show. And we do have a lot of fun. And actually in our schedule for the day, we actually have mm -hmm. an hour of a time when a sister can do whatever is life-giving for her on a, in a, on a personal level. And then a second hour where we, the local community, so whoever you're living with, gets to spend time together. So are you playing basketball? Oh, yeah. yes. In your habit? Yes, yep. actually, best way do? to do it. I love to run. I love to go walk in your with habit? sisters. Absolutely, yep. Father. We only are in our Roller habit. So you are jogging <laughs> in your habit. Yes. Yep. Inside. Yes. Inside. Yeah. Yes. And then yes. you're not allowed to jog outside. We, we do. Play, it yeah. just usually scares people when they see sisters running sense. around. <laughs> yeah. It's, or they do. It makes like, more sense. Who's she running after? Listen, exactly. <laughs> and it. I've had that before. So yeah. we've learned. Okay. So you've but, got at least some time for recreation. Yes, exactly. What about like seeing your family? I mean, people yeah. think yeah, that because you're not cloistered, yep. which yeah, is a different right. type of religious. Yes. 12 days a year, we actually go and, and dedicate wholeheartedly mm -hmm. to our families and then they can come visit us like eight days throughout the year so 12 so, yes. is it has to be 12 all at one time or can you break it up because honestly if when i if i were to do 12 mm -hmm. days with my family they would That's... they would enter a convent <laughs> <laughs> they That's would be awesome. needing to pray four hours yeah. a day yeah no it's you're right it is meaningful time right but you can break yeah. it up yeah. yeah you can and yeah. then they can come and hang out with you throughout the year yeah okay this is this is fascinating work, especially yeah. for people who might not be as familiar. Kind of like mm -hmm. you, you'd never seen nuns before. Absolutely and not, yeah. Kind of shocking. Yes. When they see you, what do you want them to see mm. besides a clean habit? God. Mm -hmm. okay. That he's real. That mm -hmm. happiness is possible this side of heaven. That uh, mm -hmm. there's meaning. And it's actually, it's not about what we do or, or what you look like or what you're earning or how much money you're not earning. That God is God is for you. But in a special way, Sisters mm -hmm. of Life yeah. are known as pro-lifers. And there's a bad rap. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard this, but people don't like pro-life people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because they think that we're judgmental. Mm -hmm. They think that we don't give women the right to choose. And that yeah. they will make these accusations. So... I know that you're probably not into yeah. this, but I kind of want to hear awesome. your elevator yeah. speech Ooh. with some challenging questions. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we had a drum roll, I would kind of have that activated. Yeah. Joe, take care of that. All right? so, <laughs> so, so here we go. Yeah. It's just a fetus. Mm -hmm. What do you say? Hmm. Once, once life is conceived, it has an eternal destiny. Mm -hmm. But it's just a fetus. And so much more. No, it's an it's an icon of the living God. Yeah, and actually, <laughs> actually, yeah, we oh, sorry, we're getting excited, excited now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yes. You go first, sister. Man, oh, so there's going to be then, like a wrestling yeah, honestly, kind of like, let me take well, this one, sister. See, you're, you're getting close to the heart here. <laughs> well, you got to hold us back. Well, <laughs> even just the truth that actually our life began before we were even a fetus, that you were a thought so of God before that. So you tell these women this stuff. Absolutely. Okay, it's just a clump of cells. I would say, tell me more about that. I, I love hearing where are people coming from, mm -hmm. right? Like, how did you get to that? Yeah. Because um, in a sense, mm -hmm. the truth is, it's like, we are sacred. All right, Amen. ready for this? It's my body, my choice. Mm -hmm. Well, there's truth, yes. And yet, freedom is a gift that we've been given, not mm -hmm. to do what we want, but to do what we ought. And actually, the high point, the crown um, of a woman's femininity mm -hmm is motherhood. Um, and actually, and this is mm -hmm. what we find, as we reflect back to women, their strength, their beauty, their goodness, mm -hmm. we delight in them, um, they come to that knowledge themselves. So often women are kind of, yes, Wait, maybe. You're, you're also gentle. I mean, because oh, I know yes. people who have to do the apologetics and they're yeah. getting yelled at. Have you experienced that in your face yelled at? Hmm. 
Yeah. Or are but, they just kind of scared? Mm-hmm. But you know what, too? I think mm-hmm. most of our conversations actually are very, mm-hmm. um, they unfold and we're weaving and we're coming from underneath. Like so we, this is a different to approach down. to the pro-life message. Yeah, and that it's not, by force. right, and that every, yeah. everything that moves our hearts is not just an issue base. It's like we're talking about heart to heart here. We want to engage with people. Yeah. Okay, you this know? Core, it's beyond core loquitur, it, right. this kind of thing that touches the heart. Okay, I'm going to yeah. do some more because this Please. is the stuff that we hear all the time, especially yeah. on social media. They will ask or they will say, mm-hmm. you're taking away a woman's bodily autonomy. Mm-hmm. It's similar to the right to choose, but bodily autonomy. Mm-hmm. What say you? Mm-hmm. Well, I think you also have to think about yeah. the life within that she's carrying. Yeah, because it is a separate life. Yes, another life. Yeah. And, and actually, they have rights as well, right? What about a woman if she was raped? Mm-hmm. What we've learned is that it's a double trauma, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that that's a, a great violence, but so too, and this is where we've received thousands of women who have shared about the impact of abortion in their life. And what we ha- what, all we can say is women suffer, and mm-hmm. that that abortion is another act of violence. Right. Having a baby is going to ruin my opportunities. Mm-hmm. I would say both. You can have your dreams, and you can have your baby too. Um, and actually, that's where we mm-hmm. we're with you, we're for you, and. Uh, unconditionally uh both both can be i would Mm -hmm. i would i would uh i'll bring my baby to term but i want to have the baby adopted but uh i'm scared that i might make that connection to it i mean so Mm -hmm. but i but i don't want to i don't think i'm capable and responsible because i'm only a teenage girl Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. i think we would walk with women, it's a it's an important mm-hmm. um, accompaniment, actually, especially if they're discerning adoption. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and it's something that she has to come to in and through a journey of prayer, and um, and actually, so she can move whether she's placing or she is parenting. If I have this baby, it's going to have a terrible life. Mm-hmm. Well, it, it sounds like we're afraid of the future. <laughs> that there's something about the future that is worrying us, and like, what if? What if there is a what if there is a way forward? Like what if we can come and, mm-hmm. and look at this together and journey through and see what's possible and that maybe maybe abortion isn't the only answer. You know, I hear you all you know? and it just sounds to me like again, I'm so grateful for the pro life warrior advocates mm-hmm. that are out in the front lines mm-hmm. praying in front of abortion clinic, they're getting yelled at all the time. But mm-hmm. you seem to have a different approach. Mm-hmm. I think it's spiritual maternity. Um, that it's a privilege to be mothers and really perfect uh, perfect love casts out fear. And what we see is that at the heart of these decisions mm. is fear. Um, yes. And so it's often listening, listening a woman into mm-hmm. life like, gosh, yeah, why, why do you think that way? Right. Um, what's driving, you know, that conviction? And yes. actually, once you get to the heart of that, you realize actually um, it's, it's uh, we can take care of that, mm-hmm. actually. Uh, and as women find their strength, I'm telling you, we don't have to tell them not to have an abortion. Right. They'll intuitively choose it themselves and heroically. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. at the heart of a woman's heart, she knows she is called to give life, to yes. nourish life, uh, yes. to flourish it. This is just a fascinating conversation. And I am I am absolutely kind of awed by how gentle you all are. Mm-hmm. Even, I mean, even me. You're making mm-hmm. me nicer. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, isn't it surprising how gentle God is, though? Like, honestly, it's like uh, he's the ultimate pressure reliever. Yeah. That actually it's nothing. He's not forcing anything on us. He's not dictating our lives. He's asking, will you be open to my plan, which is for you? Invitation. And and, and uh, so your ultimate desire yeah. in the mm. for yourself personally as well as a sister mm. of life, what, what, what are your hopes and desires? Mm. You know, I was praying about this the other day. Cool. You know, of course, because you had four hours of it. <laughs> no, That's awesome. Listen, That's awesome. someone asked Colonel O'Connor, what will the Sisters of Life do? Um, and his answer, it's like, no, no, no. It's not about what they will do. It's who they are. And he said, uh, they will love, they will love, they will love. Mm-hmm. And I think that is, um, that is, I know it's at the heart of my own heart, I want to become the fullness of of love and this unique expression that God, the mm-hmm. unique way He made me, that I can share that gift generously, um, and that yes, draw others to realize uh, how precious and sacred they are. How about for mm-hmm. you, Sister Mary Grace? Wow, 
That's awesome. I was like, ah, oh, that I know, exactly. <laughs> what she said. Yeah, but you're going to say it with an accent. Yeah, it's true. It's going to be even better. Yeah, I think, gosh, I just desire to let God in more to my heart and my life. And I know that uh, when I give God permission in my own heart and life, he, he does marvelous things before me, in me. And I desire that for every human heart, that mm. we just trust a little more. Just one more step, one more day, one more moment, and God takes care of the rest. So Honestly, this is it. my first uh, direct encounter with the sisters in a cool. full-blown conversation. I've seen them in the past, and we would kind of like banter and make jokes and stuff sure. like that because <laughs> you're the Why sisters not? of life. I mean, you're you're not stuffy in any way. Sure. But let, let me ask, you know, what can I do to help you mm. besides cook a meal for your sisters one mm. day? You know what I think. I have a thought too. Don't talk about barbecue. <laughs> it's a Friday. All right. Yeah, no yeah, yeah. Listen, and this is what I would say to you and everyone is wake mm -hmm. up and love the person next to you. Mm -hmm. um, in a sense, live, ask for a double portion of God's reverence um, for life for mm -hmm. the person next to you. And actually, it'll change your family. It yep. will change communities. It will change the world. So wake up, love the person next to you. Amen. Even as a celibate, there's no one next to me as I wake up. <laughs> and thank you, Jesus, for that. But I think we know what you're talking about. Yeah. Love thy neighbor. This is kind of a very Jesus Amen. thing. And be yourself. You know, Father, there's so much pressure to be everything else but ourselves. But I think the Lord ultimately wants the authenticity of every single one of us to receive the gift that we are. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, he makes That's that it. possible. Really, really beautiful Amen. thoughts. I mean, it's been a pleasure to kind of chat with you. Me and too, I, Father. I am so grateful that you can take my ridiculous jokes yeah. and throw it back <laughs> with a couple moves try, in yeah, the yeah. meantime here. I've had too much fun. Yeah. Too, no, there's never enough fun if Amen. you're doing something for God. You I know, agree. And God yeah, just gives so it true. to us this way. And I got to tell you, y'all, uh, if you want to support the Sisters of Life, if you want to learn about their mission as their podcast, mm -hmm. what exactly is the name of the podcast? Let Love. Okay, there's that word again. Let, let, <laughs> let love. Can't get enough blank, of it. blank, blank. And yep. then where can they find it? You can uh, just find it right on our website. So sistersoflife.org. Sistersoflife.org. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we certainly hope you all enjoyed the show. I certainly did. I mean, how can you not with these wonderful sisters? Sister <laughs> Maria Agnus Dei, as well as Sister Mary Grace, mm -hmm. all the way from the land down under, and making their way across the country, really just spreading that good joy and that good news that you are loved by God. God loves you, and um, and more importantly, I just think becoming mm -hmm. who you are. Amen. I kind of love mm -hmm. this. So listen, if you want to learn more, sistersoflife.org. Please support them. Listen to their podcast. Hey, by the way, do you listen to your podcast during the quiet time? Uh, not for fun, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you could just do that during Lent, during the pandemic. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, That's an appropriate season. time. <laughs> awesome. Well, Thanks, we hope you all enjoyed this show where we are dishing out faith, uh, culture, and some commentary. Again, thanks to the sisters, and we look forward to seeing you on the next show, The Father Leo Show. God bless. Bye.